Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is first part of lecture number 15 and in this lecture we will study circuit and waveforms of one phase half wave uncontrolled rectifier with RL load. This lecture is very important. So without wasting time, let's start the lecture. Okay, first we will start with operation of rectifier circuit. Here in this circuit, this load is RL type. This is resistance R and this is inductance L. We get output voltage V0 across this load. This diode is connected in series with this load and this whole circuit is supplied with voltage Vs and we know that Vs is equals to Vm sin omega t. Okay, now this dark black line shows the supply voltage that is equals to Vm sin omega t. Okay, first we will understand the operation of this circuit in three angular slots. First we will understand the operation from 0 to pi, then we will see the operation from pi to beta and then we will see the operation from beta to 2 pi. First we start with from 0 to pi. So from 0 to pi, this positive half cycle of supply voltage is applied to this diode. When this positive half cycle is applied to this diode, then anode of this diode receives positive potential. On receiving positive potential, this diode get forward bias and in forward bias this diode act as short circuit. When this diode is short circuited, then this supply voltage will appear across this load. It means when this diode is short circuit, we get output voltage that is equals to supply voltage. We can say that V0 is equals to Vs and that is equals to Vm sin omega t from 0 to pi. Now we will calculate the value of output current. To get the output current, we will apply KVL in this loop. When we apply KVL, we get Vm sin omega t is equals to I0 R plus L d I0 by gt. Now this current I0 has two components. First is steady state component IST and second is transient component IT. First we will calculate the transient component. To calculate the transient component, we will put the right hand side of this equation is equals to zero. And after putting it equals to zero, we will replace this I0 by IT. Okay, now doing so we get ITR plus L DIT by DT is equals to zero. On solving this equation, we get transient current is equals to A e to the power minus R by LT. And second is steady state component. A steady state component is given by IST is equals to Vm by Z sin omega t minus phi. Okay, now adding these transient and steady state current, we get total current I0 that is equals to Vm by Z sin omega t minus phi plus A e to the power minus R by L t. So at omega t is equals to zero, we know that current is zero. That's why putting this initial conditions, we get this constant A is equals to Vm by Z sin phi. Now put this constant A in this equation, we will get I0 is equals to Vm by Z sin omega t minus phi plus sin phi e to the power minus r by L t. Okay. Here to understand this derivation of output current, you must have knowledge of network theory. This derivation is based on sinusoidal steady state analysis. I will make a separate video on steady state analysis. If you are already aware of this steady state analysis concept, then you can easily understand this. If you don't know 
all if you don't understand this derivation then there is no need to memorize this derivation you can skip it because it is not important from exam point of view whether you are preparing for gate or you are preparing for es but there is a problem without knowing this derivation how you will get the idea about the waveform okay if you don't know this derivation then how will you plot this waveform now i tell you a simple method to understand this okay for this you have to remember that for our load we get maximum value of current at pi by 2 okay and in case of a one phase half wave uncontrolled rectifier with our load we get current up to pi or we can say that for our load beta was equals to pi in case of L load what we get we get maximum current at pi and we get current up to 2 pi or we can say that beta for L type load is equals to 2 pi now what is I not max position and beta for this RL load so for this RL load this I not max will lie between pi and pi by 2 okay and for RL load this beta will lie between pi and 2 pi here we can clearly see in this waveform that maximum value of output current lies between this pi by 2 and pi and we get output current that is up to beta and this beta lies between this pi and 2 pi in this way we can get this waveform of output current now what is voltage drop across diode we know that diode act as forward bias from 0 to pi during forward bias diode act as short circuit and drop across an ideal diode in forward bias is equals to 0 that's why we get 0 voltage drop across diode from 0 to pi now what is output power P0? We know that P0 is equals to V0 into I0 and we know that from 0 to pi V0 is greater than 0 and I0 is also greater than 0 that's why their product and that is equals to power is greater than 0. Now what is the significance of positive power? Positive power means that power is delivered from source to load okay and what is significance of negative power negative power means power is delivered from load to source so you must remember this concept now move to next slide now what happens after pi after pi the supply voltage reverses or we get negative half cycle of supply voltage but this output current I0 is not equals to 0 after pi or we get positive up output current after pi. So this current is still positive after pi and we get current up to beta. This has already been told to you that this current will flow from 0 to beta. Now what is the significance of this positive direction of current? This positive direction of current means the direction of flow of current is like this. So this direction of flow of current will keep this diode turn on. Or in other words we can say that this diode will remain turn on till we get current that is up to beta. If I asked you why we get current up to beta then most of you may answer we get current up to beta due to this inductor L but this is very simple explanation I will tell you the actual reason why we get current up to beta now if I ask you why we get current up to beta then most of you may answer we get current up to beta due to this inductor L but this is very simple explanation I will tell you the actual reason behind why we get current up to beta. See here in this circuit 
when this diode is forward biased or when it acts as short circuit, then this source voltage Vs will appear across this load. And what is voltage across load? That is equal to V0 and V0 is equal to Vr plus Vl where Vr is the voltage across this resistance R and Vl is the voltage across this inductor L. So replacing this V0 by Vs and rearranging this equation we get Vl is equal to Vs minus Vr. Now what is Vr? See here this is waveform of Vr. Vr is simply equals to I0 into R. That's why due to this resistive load the waveform of Vr is similar to that of I0. Okay, so this dark dotted black line is waveform of Vr and this dark black line is waveform of Vs. We can see that here that these two waveform encloses two areas that is area A and area B. Now during area A what happens we can see that during area A this Vs waveform lies above this Vr waveform. Okay. Or we can say that during area A Vs is greater than Vr. When Vs is greater than Vr then we get voltage across inductor positive. Now what does this positive inductor voltage means? This positive inductor voltage means energy stored by inductor. Now see this area B. In this area B, Vr lies above this Vs waveform. Okay, or we can say that Vr is greater than Vs. So if we put Vr greater than Vs in this equation, then we get inductor voltage negative. Now what does this negative inductor voltage means? Negative inductor voltage means energy released by inductor. And for this waveform, this energy stored must be equal to the energy released. So we get output current till the two areas A and B are equal. Okay, only in that case, this energy stored will get equal to the energy released. That's why we get current up to beta. At this point beta, these two areas are equal. Okay, so here we can conclude a one more important point that is the average value of inductor voltage is equal to zero because positive inductor voltage is equal to negative inductor voltage. Okay, after getting this concept, now we can easily understand the circuit operation from pi to beta. So from pi to beta, what happens? I0 is not equal to zero. Okay, and I0 is greater than zero. So this is I0 and the diode act as forward bias till we get current. So we get current up to beta, that's why this diode will remain turn on up to beta. So diode will conduct. And when this diode conduct, we get output voltage that is equal to supply voltage Vs that is equal to Vm sin omega t. Now what is drop across diode? When this diode is forward bias, it acts as short circuit, that's why we get zero voltage drop across diode from pi to beta. Now here we can see that this output voltage V0 that is from pi to beta is negative. Okay, because V0 is equal to Vs that's why we get this part of this waveform appearing across the load. So from pi to beta this V0 is negative but this current is positive. And what is power P0? It is simply product of V0 into I0. So we get P0 that is less than 0. Or we can say that we get P0 negative. Negative P0 means that output power is delivered from load to source. Okay. Now from beta to 2 pi, 
from beta to p2 pi this output current i naught decays to zero that's why this diode act as open circuit or we can say that diode get reverse bias when this diode is reverse bias we get output current i naught that is equals to zero when i naught is equals to zero we get v naught is equals to zero and drop across diode will be equals to vs because when this diode is open circuited and there is no current in the circuit then the supply voltage will appear across the diode that's why vd is equals to vs so this part of this source voltage will appear across this diode here p naught is equals to v naught into i naught and we know that v naught and i naught both are zero that's why we get p naught is equals to zero so this is all about this video i hope you like this video thank you jay shiaram if you got the knowledge and concepts from this video then please like the video and subscribe the channel you can give your views and ask any questions related to this topic in comment box also share this video with your friends because sharing is caring don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of my upcoming videos thank you